So how do we start to make good choices? The questions that arose in my mind that created me to go down this different path in my life was this, is that when you go to school to be a, a doctor, a physician of whatever kind, they teach us to, to diagnose and treat disease. Are you with me? So if there's nurses here, you went to school, you learned how to diagnose and treat diseases. And the question I started asking myself is that, I don't want to diagnose and treat diseases, I want to teach people how to be healthy. So the question in my mind became, why are people getting sick? And the reality is I can boil that answer down to one of two things. We're either deficient in something or we're toxic in something. Does that make sense? We're either deficient in something our body needs. That deficiency could be exercise. It could be movement, right? Your body requires a certain amount of movement. If you're not getting it, you're deficient in that. It's just like a vitamin. That's how I teach it. I, I almost like, don't like to call it exercise. I like to call it movement because I don't believe God really necessarily created us to exercise. He did create us to move around, right? <laughs> we were created to move around, all right? So, but if you're deficient in vitamin C, there's certain issues associated with that. Are you with me? If you're deficient in exercise, there's certain things. And, and no drug or surgery is going to fix the deficiency in exercise. I'll give you a little saying that I use. We are trying to medicate ourselves out of problems we behaved ourselves into. You with me? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to medicate ourselves out of problems that we behaved ourselves into. So the issue is we're either deficient in something or we're toxic in something. So my question became, what is, what is purity and sufficiency then? Right? How do we know if we're sufficient? What is required sufficiency-wise? And what is toxic? And that's the journey I went down. And so what I want to talk to you tonight is about how to live in a way, how to eat in a way that's sufficient, right, and pure. Now, does that mean you're going to do it right every time? No. So here's one of my principles for making lifestyle changes. I teach people to start with the principle of add, not the principle of subtraction. All right? So... If I go up to someone and I, they, there's something they really love to eat and I say, you can't have that anymore, how does that make them feel? Deprived. Is deprivation a stressor on your body? Yeah. Is stress good? No. Right? So what I teach people to do is add the good, 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 and let the subtraction take care of itself. And that's how I changed my life. And that's how I've done it with hundreds and hundreds of patients now over the years. Right? So what does add the good sound like? So maybe you watched a TV commercial and you heard that eating Cheerios would lower your cholesterol, okay? That's a little scary concept, but um, so you're eating Cheerios in the morning and you think that's a healthy thing because you watched the TV commercial and it told you that. Here's the principle of ad. Could you put strawberries on your Cheerios? Could you do that? Right? Could you put bananas on it? Could you eat a half an orange with it? You with me? It's the principle of adding. So when I'm doing these talks to a group of coal miners or truck drivers or whatever, I'm not going to walk in there and say, you can't have this ever again. I don't go in and say, you can never eat a chicken wing ever again. That's, uh, I could get stoned, you know, standing in front of a group of people doing that. So what I say is, when you went out to eat your chicken wings, could you eat a salad first? Would that be possible? Could you do that? Or could you give, eat the celery sticks they gave you with the blue cheese dressing? <laughs> And they'll say, yeah, I could eat a salad first. And then they do that. Right? I don't go up to them and say, hey, you can never have a beer again the rest of your life. They're like, what? Right? I'd rather die. <laughs> so I say, hey, could you drink a glass of water before you had the beer? Oh, do that. Right? And I keep adding and adding and adding. And we make those decisions. So the first rule I'm going to teach you is that during every meal, every meal or snack, try to add a fra raw fruit or vegetable with it. You with me? So if your snack right now is a Snickers bar, then I say, eat a handful of carrots before your Snickers bar. You with me? Why would you do that? Because you put in fiber, right? Is fiber going to move the Snickers bar through your system quicker and faster, right? It is. So start with the principle of add, add the good. Add a fresh fruit or vegetable with every meal. Pretty simple, huh? How about add more water? Can we do that? we add more water? So 
Some of you may be saying, I'm already eating fresh fruits and vegetables every meal, and I'm already drinking water all the time, right? So then for you, it's going to get a little bit, you know, more complicated than that, right? Um, maybe it's reducing the amount of grains in your diet. The, one of, the, the biggest, I, I would say the biggest error that I see with the American Nutrition Program is that we said that grains were part of the food pyramid. And we actually gave grains a spot on the new plate we have, right? Because now we don't have a pyramid, we have a plate. Grains are not an essential nutrient. Are you with me? They're not an essential nutrient. If you never ate another grain the rest of your life, you would only be healthier. Are you with me? And that may seem radical to some people, right? And I'm going to give you some things on that. I have a book here tonight, so I'll give you some. For those of you that like to read about this stuff, this, this is a book called Grain Brain, okay? This is a must read. I've given this to a few people recently. Some people here have read this book called Grain Brain. It's written by a neurologist who um, is also Ameri uh, in the American Academy of Nutrition. So he's the only neurologist that's a member of the American Academy of Nutrition in our country that, that we know of. And he wrote a book called Grain Brain. Um, grains actually have something in them called anti-nutrients. What an anti-nutrient is, is that it reduces the ability of your other, other things that you're eating to actually absorb the nutrients out of them. And grains are very acidic to your system, okay? So all diseases prefer a low oxygen, high acidic, high sugar environment. Are you with me? Disease likes a high acidity, high sugar, low oxygen environment. So if you reduce acidity, right, Increase oxygen, right? And so you reduce acidity, increase oxygen, and reduce sugar. You just create an environment to what? Increase health and reduce disease. All right? And so that's the diet that we're going to teach you. I have handouts and packets that I'm going to give all of you guys to take home with you tonight that are going to give you like a four-stage transition program. Some of you may be here and you may be pretty advanced on this, right? Like some of you may be here and you're like, eating a paleo diet, right? And you're hearing what I'm saying and you're saying, I'm pretty close to there already, right? Some of you may be light years away from here, okay? You may be, this may be the first nutrition talk you've ever attended in your entire life and you're like, wait a second, this guy just blew up my whole thing because I thought I was eating whole grain granola bars three times a day and getting healthier, 